Today I'm going to be demoing uh, the $1 amplifier. Now this amp uh, it's another Goodwill contraption. I was over there shopping and uh, I ended up picking up this, this guitar here for 99 cents. So, uh, yeah, it had a couple of eighth inch jacks and I was out of those and I needed them for a project. And rather than go to Radio Shack and give them, you know, 250 for two of them, I figured there was probably something else in here I can use. There was a couple of buttons and there was a mic jack and I had my fingers crossed that there would be a PT2399 or whatever, an echo chip in here too. Some of these kitty guitar things or sing-along things that have a mic jack, they'll have an echo in there and then you can remove the timing resistor and get a nice long delay, put in a pot for the feedback and you know it's pretty pretty cool cheap little hack you can do for uh, like an analog delay you can get lucky but uh, in any event what was inside of there uh, there was a board with the dead bug chip the little black blob that played the, the songs on here and then there was a, a, a separate board for the 386 amplifier and so um, I went ahead and cut that into this this box here. Uh, there's an LED, there's a pot on it, I've got an RCA out, there's in and out quarter inch, and then uh, there's a RCA on the output too. So the idea behind this is uh, if I need to amplify anything rather than, you know, if I'm if I'm breadboarding, I can I can run everything through this. That way if there is some sort of catastrophe, I'm not I'm not gonna blow up one of my good amplifiers and you know, if I'm if I'm building a circuit, and I think, well, an FET preamp or some kind of preamp isn't going to be going to give me enough gain, I really, you know, need to have an LM386 module. I've got one right here, so um, I'm sure this is going to come really in handy. Uh, the enclosure you get to see from the close-up. The enclosure I got out of the dumpster from Han System. Han System is this it's Korean computer guy and he gets uh, wholesale uh, lots of computers from businesses and I go in there and when I need like keyboards and mice and old sound cards and a lot of the stuff is one dollar you know it's a dollar I, I, I mean I burnt him a Windows XP service pack 2 disc one time I like ran home and burnt it for him and after that for about a year everything was one dollar and he's got a big bowl of candy so you get candy too there's no tax and uh, yeah, hand system, it's excellent, especially if you hit the dumpster, you can get enclosures and stuff. But uh, he recently I bought 260 gig SATA hard drives for him for 18 bucks a piece, and I got a 80 gig IDE hard drive for my uncle for 15. So, but yeah, back to this project here. Um, basically, I removed the circuit board. We'll take a close up in a second. I can show you what's going on inside this piece of junk. And then uh, you know, I do a lot of teardowns and stuff and. I try to get stuff recycled free or cheap and so uh, I ended up with a handful of like two inch, three inch, inch and a half, whatever they are, little eight ohm speakers and I wanted a speaker cabinet and I wanted to try to build a speaker cabinet because I don't know anything about finishing and I wanted to try to build a speaker grill like a frame and then stretch some cloth around it, put velcro on the back and uh, so I got some stain samples for 50 cents from Home Depot and then uh, that quart of poly for like 10 bucks and I put this together utilizing my old speakers and I don't there's a I think there's five of those little ones one of them's kind of a tweeter and then there's a four inch like automotive kind of like a sub looking speaker that I think it came out of my wife's escort but uh, if you ohm it out it comes up to eight ohms <laughs> and there's like six speakers in here so I'm sure it's all wrong and bad idea and everything but uh, you know, this was more just an exercise, and I was curious how it would sound. I think, you know, well, guitarists have this cabinet with four 12-inch speakers. What would a cabinet sound like with four 1-inch speakers? You know, that's what I was going for. So this is my homemade monitor, and uh, here's the LM386 amp. What I'm planning to do, I'm going to do a little close-up and show you the gut shots in here. Then I'm going to, basically, I'll hook up a guitar to it. I'm going to use a couple pedals, reverb, and then a distortion, and you can get to hear how loud this sucker gets. Um, so this, you know, the idea behind this is rather than, you know, building uh, an LM386 chip amp, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to discourage anybody from ordering a kit. Um, 
personally, you know, I like to do things as cheaply as possible and recycle stuff. So for me, this is this worked out to be a great thing because it cost me 99 cents, and you know, well, actually, probably a little more than that because the LEDs recycled, but the pot was 50 cents, so a dollar 50 for the amp. So you get the basic idea. I mean. Uh, the kits are great and everything, and or hunting down the parts and going and buying a, a little breadboard for a dollar or two dollars at Radio Shack. You know, it's going to add up to be around ten dollars. But uh, actually, if you were to wander into your Salvation Army and find something like this and go home and hack it, it's going to take you about a third or a quarter of the amount of time, and you're going to end up with basically the same thing for about a dollar. So, uh, not that my way is better, but <laughs> it, this, this particular instance worked out pretty good. So, enough of my yakking. Let's, uh, let's get some gut shots of this piece of trash here. Okay, taking a look at the inside of this LM386 mini amp. The chip is a JRC386D. Now, I've heard that there's a few different variations on the 386 and that some of them have more wattage. So one of the mods I could do is uh, remove that chip and throw a socket in there and you know try out to get a louder one or what have you. Um, who knows if I end up doing that or not. Also when I was poking around inside of here I found the resistor that sets the gain and the input. So if I wanted to I could end up removing that resistor and cutting in some sort of value pot or combination of resistor and pot to get a variable input gain. Um, the wiring was pretty straightforward. There's input output. Um, I split the output. There actually was a connection for headphones uh, and then uh, the actual speaker output and they, they came off the same points. So the RCA goes to one and then the quarter inch goes to the other and I, I end up using the RCA quite a bit because that's what I have on my speaker. Um, there really there was no timer circuit on this. This is such a cheap toy. Uh, I've run into they have timers that auto shut off these toys now and sometimes you can poke around and disable them with a resistor, a real low value, or sometimes there'll be a switch that you can just connect on the unit and that works on some units. Um, one video unit I ran into when you hard shorted it, it, it rainbowed out the video a little bit after a time, so a low, low value resistor helped that. But like I said, this was a real straight up little project. I, the, the tin for the, the chassis is real thin, so I just cut a, a little block of uh, press board and used some JB Weld automotive epoxy to, to glue that down and then you know went ahead and screwed the board onto there. Now, at the time, I was out of proper DC input jack, so I used a one that's cabled, a female 2.1 millimeter DC jack, and uh, I'm going to end up placing that. I, I think my parts order came in, so you know, once again, you can see I use hot glue for the LED, and uh, I, I used a part of a big pen, uh, the black tip part fit the LED, and so that I use that as a spacer to lower the LED, so it wasn't sticking out so far as to where it would might get broken down. Now taking a look inside this speaker, um, you can see it's just basically a mess of hot glue. There is a capacitor on the top speaker to uh, filter out some low frequencies and that capacitor was broken so I matched the value and replaced it. Other than that it's a combination of series and parallel wiring to obtain the four ohms, eight ohms that I was going for for this unit. I'm pretty sure it's 8 ohms. It may have been 4. No, you know what? I think I, I had this ohm out to 8. So, uh, basically there you have it. Now looking at the front of this cabinet and see how I constructed this speaker grill. That was kind of challenging. I had to I had to make a like a jig to cut these small pieces of wood to assemble this frame and then there was these little triangles wood pieces that I that were in my scrap box and I ended up using those now. Then I got a staple gun and used staples to uh, hold down the fabric. I had to tap those in with a hammer. And the only thing I really regret is the hot glue on the Velcro got a little messy on the one side. But other than that, for a first try and something being so small, 
Now, as you'll hear, the speaker doesn't sound fantastic. This, this was a learning experience. I really don't know anything about finishing. I've never built a speaker grill. Um, you can see I did, I kind of made a, a false bottom for it, so there's a little port for the base, which probably doesn't really do very much. Um, but, uh, you know, it was a learning experience, like I said. It's, the chassis is a cigar box, once again. So that's pretty much basically it for this part of the tour here. Now I'll uh, go ahead and plug in and you can get an idea of what this thing sounds like.